Greetings adventurers, today we'll be talking about the Stalker RPG. This is a sci-fi RPG by a Finnish author based off of a Russian book by the Strugatskys, known as Roadside Picnic. But we're going to be focusing on the system today as a high level overlook. For character creation, you're going to get 8 different attributes, and to determine your attributes, you're going to choose 10 different aspects that describe what your character went through through childhood, their teenage years, adulthood, and as well as a single hobby. Whatever these aspects are, they're associated with a different attribute, and the abundance of those aspects in those attributes are going to determine your character's actual attributes. Then you're going to have some skills to help tweak what your character knows, and finally, of course, it's going to have a dollar-based equipment system, so it can be a little bit crunchy right there, because the amount of wealth you start with is based off of your character's education and wealthy background. The background of the story is that there are a number of anomalous zones within the world after the visitation from extraterrestrial beings. These anomalous zones are the heart of the game. They are the full scene for what your characters are stalkers for. This isn't stalker like the video game, like Chernobyl. This is stalkers for this anomalous zone. There's an institute that is controlling them and researching them. And there are a number of changed individuals in this world mutated by the effects, but otherwise it's really a spooky sci-fi horror type game that I think captures that feeling better than any other Dice's RPGs we've gone over really can. To resolve conflict, you're going to describe what your character does, and then between you and the narrator or the storyteller and the rest of the players, you're going to determine how good your idea is, how good your description is, and then just flat out score them between 1 and 5, and multiply that by your character's attribute, and that's going to be a result which you compare to the difficulty of that challenge. Pretty straightforward, looking forward to sharing character creation, the different artifacts and different zones with you in the future. Greetings adventurers, today we'll be going over character creation in the Stalker Sci-Fi RPG. To start with, you're going to need to come up with your character concept, and then your character didn't just spawn out of the world whole cloth, we're going to take them through their childhood and early years, their education and career, to figure out who they are. And I mean that literally. You're going to define 10 abilities. These are small descriptions of what your character knows how to do, kind of like skills. And each of these are things that your character would have gone through, let's say three abilities from their early childhood, three abilities from their education years, three abilities from their career, and then one ability that's a hobby or special talent. Each of these abilities are going to be defined by which of the attributes they fall under. This could be abilities for fitness, alertness, intellect, willpower, charisma, education, tactical, or zone. With zone being the only very special attribute that's only found in this game that refers to your character's facility with the different anomalous zones. Then, depending on the number of abilities you have in each of these attributes, they're going to be assigned either a 1, 2, 3, or 4. Very rarely a 4. Then, each of these abilities is going to have a drawback associated with it. Maybe your character has a quirk about how they perform certain things. Maybe when they're doing martial arts, they have a trademark technique, kick, throw, anything, that they like to sneak in wherever they can. And so it's a drawback because it can make them predictable and also maybe put them in a bad situation because of their tendency to lean towards it. It could also be a bad reputation. It could be that your character has an injury or trauma associated with these different abilities. Your character has had a, lived a life already and now they have become a stalker. Your character is also going to get a piece of equipment associated with each, each of these abilities. And every stalker also has their own apartment, some place relatively close to the zone, a secret hideout, which could be anywhere in the world, about $2,000 or monies of spending cash that's easily available, and then depending on your character's education and wealth abilities, they may have more money on top of that. And that's the super basics of character creation. We're going to go over equipment next time. Unless we're going to continue with equipment in Stalker. Most of the equipment is going to cost between $5 and $500, depending on what it is. You know, simple everyday food items the character can probably find even within the anomalous zone. But if you're looking for melee weapons, throne weapons, firearm, those can become much more rarefied. There's also protective gear, electronics, camping gear, medical gear, tools, and special equipment your character might want to provide themselves with. 
Reminder that you're going to get one piece of equipment per ability that your character has, and then you're going to have some spending money. So use it wisely, and probably keep some as liquid funds as well for a rainy day. Because this is a largely narrative game, the weapons are going to have small descriptions. A weapon with longer range is going to be more useful from far away, but it can become a liability if you try to use it up close. The amount of damage that they can inflict is termed as light wounds, minor wounds, moderate wounds, or serious wounds. These are just a guideline rather than a hard numerical value. They have a speed, which is going to tell you how quickly they can be used effectively. Weapons with a faster speed are going to be used more quickly. The effective range is just exactly what it sounds like. And then weapons with ammunition are going to have it recorded as well. Just kill out your stalker as would be appropriate, and maybe even create some caches that your character could have hidden around the world. And you don't need to have it predefined. Your character is a more experienced stalker than you are a stalker player. So we like to keep it open. Then we're going to go now we're going to go into the basics of flow. This is the actual mechanical system of Stalker. Most of the time, your character is just going to succeed. They're going to be better at most things than an unexperienced person. That is assuming that what they're trying to do is trivial or routine. If things become more interesting and the possibility of failure or success might add to the story, then we can start thinking about it. First, you need to describe to the Game Master what you're attempting to do with your player character. Then they need to see, is it routine? If it's not, then we need to look at your character's attribute. If their attribute is high enough, they suggest succeed. If their attribute is high enough, or it's not high enough, then we should look at their character's abilities. If they have a relevant ability, then they should be able to attempt it. If they have the relevant ability and the attribute is high enough, then they again should just succeed. If what the character is attempting is truly a challenge, then there should be a numerical value between 2 and 30 to determine how difficult it is, with 10 to 15 being pretty reasonable. If you really want your character to have a better chance of succeeding, you can tip the hand of fate by actually spending one of your attribute points. These are a temporary spend, but it is an actual reduction of your attribute until your character is able to get a significant rest. This may not be a complete success. It might be that your character has an incredible stroke of luck, that your character gets a good hint, or they merely survive that individual challenge. Once your attribute is reduced to zero, then your character can no longer spend it to tip the hand of fate for those types of actions. When you describe what your character is attempting to do, it's going to be scored for its idea, which is how much it makes sense to the table, whether it makes actual mechanical sense or not, and then the role play, which is how much it fits your character's backstory, abilities, and attributes. These are scored from one to five, and then they're multiplied together with the attribute to get your net result. Whatever that result is, that's going to become what's compared to the challenge. If you succeed, congratulations. If you don't, then hopefully you'll be failing forward. Welcome to the last video in the Stalker series. I just want to say that this game doesn't really have powers per se. Maybe your character could have been changed by the zone, but they don't really go into what that means. The only power your character is really supposed to have is a sixth sense about anomalous events and that way your character could detect when there's an artifact nearby, maybe you can see when there is any of these anomalous entities at, in action, but otherwise there's just the artifacts. There's a few of the artifacts they have listed in the game. Their basic idea is there are some that are very simple shapes with very simple functions that maybe are non-direct. Those ones were probably components to some larger alien device. And then there's some actual formal artifacts, things that are actual devices which tend to be asymmetrical and have directed effects. One that appears in the book is a so-so. It's a cylindrical rod with a safe handle in the middle that supplies unlimited energy. It's enough to power an electric car and you can also use it to basically zap people from either end. There's an itcher, which is a small, soft orb, which you can pinch to dent it, which will cause it to release a hallucinating and debilitating effect that you can throw, kind of like a reusable grenade. A pin is a thin cone we can pinch the bulb end and it's going to emit light, sort of like an alien flashlight. The rattling napkin is a cylindrical disc that slowly starts to crumple. And then once it becomes fully crumpled, it's going to emit all the electrical charge it's developing over the entire time. So this is rather than like the so-so is a somewhat directed device, definitely a power source for whatever alien thing is supposed to be. The rattling napkin is more of a capacitor, but in this case, you could use it as an electrical grenade, very similar to the itch. The lobster eye is a wand about the length of a human's arm with a translucent sphere on one end. 
when it is gripped, it starts to generate a tremendous heat. Most people can only handle this for dozens of seconds before they find that they have to drop it. One of the most versatile and interesting ones, I think, is the bracelet. They come in many different types. They're generally hard to categorize, but they also generally enhance a user's vital functions in some way. Some of them will stop your character from needing to eat, to sleep, to breathe. They will nullify poisons. They will enhance their metabolism in some way. They're too versatile to say. They're too versatile to pin down. One of the most feared is the death lamp. It emits a green beam of light where if any of it touches even the skin of an exposed person, it will kill them, if not instantaneously, then agonizingly over the next few hours. Its victims will not even properly decompose because it kill kills all the microbes as well. The effective duration and distance are not fully known, but at the very least, a good set of protective clothing is all it takes to protect your character. It needs direct skin contact, and then if it gets any of that, it's done. These are just some of the example artifacts in the game. There are also monuments, which are non-mobile things, which are much more powerful, and I would say just as interesting. And that's going to be it for Stalker. I hope you've enjoyed this journey. I hope you enjoy this game sometime in your future. And next we're going to be talking about novelists. Happy gaming to you.